Hey guys, AB here from BH, and today we're talking about six ways you're recording your vocals wrong. I want to thank you in advance for taking the time to watch this video, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Whether you're working in a project studio or a professional multi track facility, or even if you're not working, capturing a great vocal requires a lot more than just putting an expensive mic through an expensive preamp. So here's a list of six things to avoid when recording vocals. One, using the wrong mic. When recording vocals, make sure you choose a mic that A, is tailored to capturing vocals, and B, suits the specific person you're recording. That being said, generally speaking, you're gonna to wanna to use a large diaphragm condenser mic with a cardioid polar pattern, like this Aston Origin, though there are hundreds of options out there from which to choose. Large condensers are great at accurately capturing all the nuances and details of the human voice, and they happen to work really well on acoustic instruments too. Now, there's no rule which says that you have to use a condenser mic for vocals, but for studio grade vocals, the large diaphragm condenser is the standard. Two, bad mic positioning. Once the mic is put on a stand, you're only just getting started. It's very important to make sure that the height and distance of the microphone is at the optimum position for catching your singer's voice. In terms of height, you want the singer's mouth to be at the same level of the capsule, more or less, in order to pick up as much of the sound coming out of his or her mouth. Once you get the height right, you'll want to figure out the prime distance between the singer and the mic. A good starting place is to have the singer stand about four to six inches from the microphone. And here's where you'll really need to use your ears in conjunction with your eyes. Why? Well, if the singer is too close, you may experience the dreaded proximity effect, which basically makes the vocal sound boomy, as if it were being recorded in a cardboard box. Roll it! Hoo-hoo, yeah! Yeah, baby! Woo! Conversely, if the singer stands too far back from the mic, the voice will sound very distant, and more importantly, you'll lose the ability to capture all the nuances that help make a great lead vocal. Three, not using a pop filter. Unless your microphone has an effective built-in pop filter, there's no reason not to use an external pop filter when recording vocals. Here's an example. Please, baby, baby, please! Now that's annoying. I mean, it's already annoying because what I'm saying is ridiculous, but it's also annoying because it's distracting. Not to mention that those plosives negatively affect the quality of the audio. If you don't know what plosives are, they are those hard consonants that you get from letters like P, K, T, B, D, and G. Here it is again with a pop filter in place. Please, baby, baby, please! Ah, much better. We haven't negatively affected the sound of the voice, and we're keeping those consonants at bay. Pop filters are pretty inexpensive nowadays. When you do set one up, place it a few inches in front of the mic's diaphragm for good results. And here's a pro tip. Place your pop filter on a separate mic stand. That way, if the artist accidentally bumps into the filter, it won't cause problems by shaking or hitting the mic directly. Four not opting for the right acoustic space or treatment. Unless you're fortunate to be recording in a professionally treated room or booth, you need to be aware of the acoustics of the space you'll be recording in, particularly when it comes to vocals. Even if you're using the best gear available, a poor acoustic setup can render your recording useless, or at least not that useful. Room size will often determine the type of acoustic treatment needed, but you'll most certainly need a way to control bouncing sound, sometimes called reflections, flutter echo, or slap echo. Companies such as RLX and Prime Acoustic make great panels for controlling these reflections, and depending on the size of your room, you can purchase the appropriate amount necessary to tame those unwanted echoes. If you happen to be recording in a very small booth, you need to be aware of bass frequency buildup, which tends to occur in the corners where the walls meet. Using bass traps in these corners can really help tame the low-end rumble that often occurs here, and there are a handful of companies that make effective bass traps. Five. Setting the mic input level too high or too low. Another avoidable mistake made when recording vocals, and with a mic in general, is not paying attention to the input level coming into your DAW or recorder. If you set the level too high, there's a good chance that the signal will distort and give you unusable vocals. Set it too low, and you'll be forced to boost the signal afterward, which means you'll also be boosting any other sounds or noise in the room that were picked up by the mic. A good way to determine proper input level is to have the singer sing at the volume he or she believes they'll max out at. Then set the input level roughly between negative 12 to negative 6 dBFS on your channel's input, which visually appears to be about three quarters of the way up the meter. This way, you'll give yourself enough gain for a nice, clean signal while maintaining enough headroom to prevent signal clipping. Six, recording with too much compression and or effects. Let's start with compression. A bit of compression is fine if you're using it to control a few peaks here and there, but if you compress the incoming signal to the point of squashing it, there's very little, 
if anything, you can do to fix it in the mix. There's no fixed rule, but if you're gonna compress while recording, a safe approach would be to use a low ratio, like two to one, with a slow attack and release, and a fairly high threshold. This will prevent the compressor from hitting those transients too hard and ruining your vocal takes. As for other effects like reverb and delay, it's best to add them after you've recorded. Typically, like with most effects, you can create an aux bus with an effect on it that you can route your audio to. This way, you can both preserve the integrity of the raw track and insert the effects you're looking for to add creativity to your project. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks again for watching. And by the way, if you have your own tips for what not to do when recording vocals, please feel free to share them in the comments below. This is AB, see you next time.